With Sleep Smarter, Sean Stevenson writes a compelling book on how to improve every area of your life through better, longer sleep. Beginning with his own breakthrough about the connections between sleep and health, he walks the reader through every aspect of getting a quality level of sleep on a regular basis. You'll understand why sleep is interwoven with health in this book and how to incorporate the best food, exercise, and lifestyle protocols to improve your quality of sleep and what to change in order to optimize your sleep. Here's what you'll learn about in this book summary specifically. First, amazing evidence of the importance of sleep for optimizing your health. What you can add to your life to improve your sleep. And finally, which things are interfering with your sleep and what to do about it. Crucial quotes. Quote, good sleep is where I found the greatest leverage to change my health and my body. And this is what completed the three pillars of health that changed everything for me. Right nutrition, right exercise, and right sleep. Quote, High quality sleep fortifies your immune system, balances your hormones, boosts your metabolism, increases your physical energy, and improves the function of your brain. Unless you give your body the right amount of sleep, you will never I repeat, never have the body and life you want to have. Quote, You can break the old pattern of being up at night, tired and wired, by being early to rise and having a natural release of cortisol, then going to bed earlier and taking advantage of the natural release of melatonin. Tweetable Summary Sleep Smarter will help you love your life by giving you the necessary practical strategies you need to gain excellent health through great sleep. Big idea number one, value sleep and step into the sunlight. Quote, sleep is not an obstacle we need to go around. It's a natural state your body requires to boost your hormone function, heal your muscles, tissues, and organs, protect you from diseases, and make your mind work at its optimal level. Unquote. Since the invention of artificial light, sleep has taken some hard hits. Increasingly, the focus has been on sleeping less and working more. But we are now learning that sleep deprivation is a very serious problem. In fact, the author tells us that sleep deprivation has a similar impact on your brain as binge drinking and marijuana use. Sleeping is a critical time for brain maintenance. When you sleep, your brain increases the action of the glymphatic system. This is the waste removal system that's found within every human brain. It eliminates toxins and waste products that have built up around the cells throughout the day and literally makes room for new growth and new development. Without this system working effectively, toxins that are linked to Alzheimer's disease build up inside the brain. Sleeping is also when healing and repair occur throughout the body, improving the critical functions of hormones and protecting against disease. Using a calendar or a day timer, plan your sleep hours first and foremost, before scheduling anything else. Look at sleep as a reward that you actually get to enjoy every single day. Your sleep cycle, that is your circadian cycle, is deeply connected to natural sunlight. So when you step into the morning sun, it triggers your body to release hormones for daytime activity. This is controlled by the hypothalamus inside the brain. These hormones control critical, crucial bodily functions and mental acuity. With their release, an intricate cycle begins that concludes with a good, solid night's sleep. Without enough sunlight or with too much artificial light exposure, this cycle just does not work the way that it's designed to work. And the result is a reduced quality of sleep and an overall generally reduced 
quality of health and wellness. The neurotransmitter, serotonin, is an important part of this cycle, mostly found in your gut. It is one of the keys to your sleep cycle and your emotional well-being too. Serotonin will increase or decrease based on what you eat, how active you are, and your exposure to sunlight. When the light receptors in your eyes are exposed to sunlight, a message is actually sent to the hypothalamus to have the body increase serotonin production. Office workers who don't see sunlight during the day sleep less than those who work near windows. Another link is in your skin. Our skin can make serotonin and then use serotonin to make melatonin. Melatonin is the messenger that tells the body to get ready for sleep, and it improves your overall quality of sleep too. As it gets darker, melatonin levels actually increase in our bodies. Now, cortisol, which is often thought of as a stress hormone, is also part of the sleep cycle. Under healthy conditions, cortisol actually gives you the pep that you need to get going in the morning. When cortisol is up, melatonin is down. The balance is very, very crucial. Sunlight will cause cortisol to decrease as the day proceeds, paving the way for an increase in melatonin. Now, we need sunlight exposure for good sleep. Stevenson actually recommends getting direct sunlight for at least 30 minutes between 6 a.m. and 8.30 a.m. whenever possible, even on a cloudy day. Get some sun on your skin when you can throughout the day also. Try a 10-minute walk outside or just a quick stroll whenever you get an extra minute throughout the day. Also, while getting natural sunlight through windows is beneficial, be careful to avoid long periods of exposure in order to protect your skin from UVA damage. You can also use a quality device that replicates sunlight, a phototherapy device, if necessary. Big idea number two, watch out for blue light and coffee. The blue light from the screens of your electronic devices is especially destructive to natural sleep patterns. It causes an increase in daytime hormone production, even at nighttime. You will take longer to fall asleep in these cases and have poor quality sleep if you're constantly using your electronic devices towards the p.m. Just two hours of computer screen time, for instance, before bed, was enough to significantly suppress people's nighttime release of melatonin. Now, choose nighttime activities that do not include technology, and that's very crucial because the process to unravel addiction to technology is important to the journey of better sleep. Instead of having dopamine in our system at night, which is related to being alert and addicted, we need to have serotonin, which is related to feeling relaxed. To stop this addiction, you need to interrupt the flow by changing up your activities. Instead of logging into a device, find something positive to do, something physical and real that you can try. Even going to get a glass of water can help. Make sure you replace the technology addiction with something that you enjoy doing. There are four practical ways to eliminate the harmful impact of light from technology. Number one, turn off all screens and notifications at least 90 minutes before bedtime in order to allow melatonin and cortisol levels to normalize in your body. Number two, replace your technology with an alternative that you actually enjoy, like a real physical book, for instance, or just hanging out with your family. Number three, if you do use an electronic device for reading, utilize a blue light blocker. Number four, you can also alternatively pick up a pair of glasses that are actually capable of blocking this blue light from your devices. Now, caffeine, that beautiful part of many of our mornings, 
is also a huge problem when it comes to sleeping. Even six hours before bedtime, caffeine can mess up your sleep cycle. Studies show that people who consume caffeine near bedtime lose some REM and deep sleep, the REM stage, which is critical to quality sleep. Now, this can have an ongoing impact on our health and an increased desire for caffeine throughout the day. Other sources of caffeine, like chocolate and tea, can also cause the same problems, and this leads to poor sleep and less time for the brain to rest and remove those toxins. Caffeine also signals the release of adrenaline and cortisol. Now, the body responds to these by being alert and ready for action. Unfortunately, though, the after effect is an energy crash, and often another cup of coffee to try and wake up again. Decreasing or removing caffeine consumption is best done strategically to reduce withdrawal and increase success. So slow and steady, in other words. You can start by replacing caffeine with tea. It still has caffeine, but in a smaller amount and is easier for your body to process. Pick a time to decrease caffeine when you don't have as many demands on you. Exercise and increase your water and fiber consumption as well. Find someone to keep you accountable. That's also a very, very excellent way to get yourself to wean off of something that you know isn't good for you. Get someone else to be your accountability buddy. Make yourself a caffeine curfew. That's another great tip. At least six hours before bedtime, set a caffeine curfew and stick with it. In order to enhance the effects of coffee when you drink it, you can also try drinking two days on and three days off, two months on, one month off, so on and so forth. Big idea number three, chill out and watch the time. Quote, the hypothalamus actually integrates the functions of the nervous system, which senses the internal and external temperature and your endocrine system, which secretes specific hormones to either induce sleep or keep you awake. Your hypothalamus is like the coach of your cellular basketball team. If your coach is treated well, that is, given a nice salary or nutrition, plenty of health, movement, and not overstressed, chances are it can keep everyone in line, achieving the best results possible. Unquote. There is overwhelming evidence that the right temperature is very important to good sleep. When nighttime comes, your body's temperature naturally drops. Sleeping in a room between 60 degrees and 68 degrees Fahrenheit is best. People with sleep disorders respond very well to strategies that cool them down before and during sleep. You also need to be mentally cool, that is, relaxed and calm. To improve sleep, keep your bedroom around 68 degrees. Try taking a warm bath about an hour and a half to two hours before bedtime. While this initially raises body temperature, it ultimately helps it cool, which is good for sleeping. Consider a cooling mattress also, or mattress pad. If you suffer from cold feet, you can wear a pair of socks to bed also. Sleeping at the right time is also absolutely critical. The body responds best to sleep between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. Now, this is actually your optimal sleep time. Many people experience a second wind later on at night and use this as a reason to stay up later. This second wind is actually supposed to occur during sleep when your body increases internal metabolic energy to repair and strengthen and rejuvenate your body, increase antioxidant hormones, and even improve brain function. You're missing all of this if you're awake when you get your second wind. Consistently staying up late is also just plain unhealthy. The International Agency for Research on Cancer has now classified overnight shift work as a group 2A carcinogen. Melatonin 
which is such a big part of nighttime sleep, might actually be your body's best hormone to defend against cancer. Night shift workers have a slew of health problems, from higher disease rates to increased risk of injury and accidents. And it's possible to make up for one night of poor sleep by getting some extra sleep and exercise. But consistent poor sleep cannot be compensated for ever. Plan your bedtime to be between 9 and 11 p.m. As soon as possible when you wake up, get some sunlight. If you can, don't work the night shift. For those who must work night shifts, try to bulk the night shifts together and then have a longer stretch of healthy sleeping hours. Ideally, this is something like two months of nights and 10 months off of nights. And since our sleep moves through cycles during the night that lasts about 90 minutes each, plan your waking up time to be after a full cycle. This will help you feel more alert and rested when you wake up. Big idea number four. It takes guts and a great setting. Quote, The types of food that you eat along with the nutrients they contain, or lack thereof, automatically incite processes that determine what your body, health, and sleep will look like. Not only that, the environment in your belly itself can either make or break getting a good night's sleep. Unquote. The serotonin in your gut helps with digestion. And your body uses serotonin to make melatonin. Amazingly, the human gut is a mass of neural tissue filled with 30 types of neurotransmitters just like your brain. What you eat has a significant impact on how you feel and how you sleep. The gut is like your second brain and contains more neurons than the spinal cord or even the peripheral nervous system. A main nerve, the vagus nerve, sends signals between all of the organs, but primarily these messages are sent from the gut to the brain. Within the gut are bacteria that play an important role in nervous system communication and serotonin production. When it comes to good bacteria and bad bacteria, the criteria that matters the most is the ratio of these bacteria. They both play a role. Your sleep cycle affects this balance of bacteria. At night, bacteria change roles, but if you're not sleeping, this can't happen, thus upsetting this bacterial balance. Healthy bacteria balance can be damaged by agricultural chemicals, processed foods, haphazard or repeated antibiotic use, chemical food additives and preservatives, and chlorinated water. Eating man-made processed foods brings most of these damaging items into our gut. You can bring health and balance back to your gut or to your gut in the first place if it was never there by eating the right foods and supplementing only when necessary after your food habits are on track. Eat foods that are high in selenium, vitamin C, tryptophan, potassium, calcium, vitamin D, omega-3s, melatonin, tart cherries are the best source, by the way, vitamin B6, and probiotics and prebiotics. Look for organic foods with minimal processing. Magnesium can be absorbed by using a quality topical application used just before bedtime. Eat magnesium-rich foods like green leafy vegetables, pumpkin and sesame seeds, spirulina and Brazil nuts. Avoid chemicals and byproducts that can damage your gut. Your brain thrives on predictable patterns. These enable the brain to focus on other aspects and have fewer decisions to make. When it comes to sleep time, your brain needs predictability. Reserve your bedroom for sleep and sex only. When you consistently repeat the same actions, 
your brain increases the myelin nerve insulation around the nerves used to send and receive those particular signals. This makes the signals for the actions run smoother and faster and creates muscle memory. Having clear uses for your bedroom strengthens these connections. Using your bedroom for all kinds of other activities is just going to weaken this connection. Never bring work to bed either. If you have a sleep partner, ask them to also keep work out of the bedroom. Have fresh air or air movement at night also. If you can't, you can use a high-quality ionizer to revitalize the air within your bedroom. A humidifier can also help, as can a tabletop fountain. Have some plants in your room or inside of your home in general. The perennial snake plant releases oxygen at night, making it a great bedroom plant, by the way. Jasmine has been found to increase sleep quality. Make your bedroom a place that inspires rest and relaxation. Big idea number five. Orgasms and sleeping in the dark. An orgasm releases a cocktail of chemicals, including oxytocin, serotonin, norepinephrine, vasopressin, and the pituitary hormone prolactin. All of these help with sleep. Oxytocin calms, reverses cortisol, and triggers endorphin release. Serotonin is a powerful anti-stress neurotransmitter. Norepinephrine works with regulating sleep states and helps with melatonin production. Vasopressin increases sleep quality and decreases levels of cortisol. Prolactin creates a feeling of tiredness and fatigue and sleep. It's also true that getting good sleep leads to good sex. Sex and orgasm have many benefits, according to the author, from boosting the immune system to fighting depression to actually helping you to live a longer life. Share what you like with your lover and listen to them. Remember that good nutrition will improve sleep and subsequently your sex life. Be active during sex. It adds the extra benefits of fatigue and satisfaction. Sleeping in the dark is also very important. Any light can mess with your sleep cycle and melatonin production. Even if your eyes are covered, the receptors in your skin will actually pick up light and send the wrong messages to your brain when you're trying to fall asleep. You can also try getting blackout curtains and eliminate other sources of light. Blue light is especially detrimental to melatonin production and sleep cycles. Though if needed, the best night light is a dim red light. Eliminate light from any sources possible, even alarm clocks, or at least replace yours with one with red digits. Turn down the luminosity of your lights also, or replace them with dim red bulbs. Use blackout curtains if you get a lot of unnatural light in your bedroom windows. And remember to block out light that shines over the top of your curtains. Big idea number six, more exercise and less technology. Quote, the secret is that your body is transformed from your workout while you sleep. This is when your body releases large amounts of beneficial hormones and elicits repair programs to build you up better than before. But you only get the full reward if you properly rest and recover. Unquote. Exercise improves the quality of our sleep, and sleep brings about great results from exercise. Find an exercise you enjoy doing, and you'll vastly benefit from the results of doing it consistently. People who exercise in the morning time actually experience significantly better restorative sleep. Now, the morning cortisol spike aids in exercise, and the sleep cycle's pattern of a subsequent decrease throughout the day. Evening and nighttime exercise raises core temperature, which doesn't help with sleep, 
but late afternoon exercise can partner well with the thermoregulation required for sleep. The youthful benefits of well-timed exercise and sleep are actually related to telomeres. Telomeres are found at the ends of every chromosome and provide protection for us. Over time, these telomeres actually get clipped off until there's no protection left, and then the cells begin to break down, leading to aging. Sleep deprivation is one of the single biggest triggers for accelerated loss of your telomere length. High school and college students need to know that the sleep habits they have will impact their whole entire life. To keep your telomeres young, engage in moderate exercise at least 100 minutes a week. Avoid late night workouts. Only participate in extremely strenuous activities like long-distance running if it's something you really love. The best exercise for hormonal response is actually heavy weightlifting. This has the greatest benefit to your genetics and will have the greatest and most desirable physical changes to your body also. Consistent exercise can have a significant improvement for insomniacs. Elite athletes know that sleep is a key part of their training. When a college basketball team was asked to increase their nightly sleep, they ran faster, improved their shooting by 9%, felt less tired, and were overall happier and healthier. Schedule early morning physical activity right after you plan your sleep schedule. Do something you enjoy and have someone who will keep you accountable. At first, It may be hard to get started, but as your sleep and exercise habits improve, it will become easier. Lift weights at least twice a week. Staying connected via technology is also having a negative impact on our sleep. Even talking on a cell phone before bed can cause poorer quality of sleep. Having your cell phone by your head at night increases your exposure to cell phone radiation too. It also can lead to habits such as checking for emails in the middle of the night and focusing on external stressors, not the thing you need to be doing when you're trying to go to sleep. Starting the day, checking emails and messages on your phone immediately puts other people's priorities ahead of yours. So avoid grabbing your phone first thing in the morning if you can. Cell phone radiation is actually classified by the World Health Organization as a group 2B carcinogen. This radiation also causes melatonin secretion to be disrupted. Children and teens are especially at risk for certain tumors if they frequently talk on a cell phone because their thinner skull bones allow for greater penetration of cell phone radiation. Get the electronics out of your bedroom. Keep your bedroom reserved for sleep and sex. Use an alarm clock instead of your cell phone's alarm. Work with your partner to remove the TV from your bedroom. Keep any other electronics at least six feet away from your bed in every direction. You can also get some EMF, electromagnetic frequency shielding bed lining for use. It's also a great idea to turn the Wi-Fi off every night. Big idea number seven, losing weight and smarter drinking. Being overweight puts extra stress on the organs responsible for hormone secretion, which impairs sleep. Hormones relay messages throughout the body and even slight disruptions will have a negative impact. However, you also impact your hormones with your actions. The best place to begin to remedy this is with an improved diet. Sleep apnea is also an effect of being overweight. It's caused by extra stress on the organs and compromised breathing when there is extra weight around the neck area. Although a CPAP machine will ease these symptoms, Losing excess weight will bring the solution. 
When looking to lose weight, it's fat that you want to lose. In order to lose fat and not lean muscle, you need your hormones working for you rather than against you. Insulin is the hormone most at play here. When you consume carbohydrates, insulin is actually turned on and fat storage is increased. The key is consuming the right proportions of proteins and fats instead and decreasing carbohydrate consumption. Dietary fats are actually our source of energy. They are critical to performing certain neurological functions, so enjoy eating a higher ration of protein and healthy fats. You increase your body's availability of essential micronutrients by simply eating real food. Real food. You can tell if a food is not real if you can't tell where it comes from, you picked it up from a drive through window, it contains more than four or five ingredients, or perhaps if you cannot even read the ingredients. And a side note here, if your food's being peddled by a mascot or if it comes with a toy, you're probably being lured into eating something fake. Sleep problems and obesity operate on a very dangerous cycle. You need sleep in order to make good choices and to avoid cravings, and you need a healthy weight in order to regulate a healthy sleep cycle. If necessary, the best snack in the evenings is high-fat, low-carb. Ideally, stop eating at least 90 minutes before bedtime also. Eat mostly micronutrient-rich food. Make breakfast your best meal by consuming real food, superfoods, and healthy fat supplements. And watch out for fruits that are high in sugar. When you experience quality sleep, you will be getting great REM sleep, which helps you process memories. Drinking alcohol at night will help you fall asleep sooner, but your REM sleep will be disrupted, and that can cause major issues. It causes more adenosine, which makes you feel sleepy, but alcohol also makes your body try to clean up this artificial component and throws off your sleeping balance. Women will experience stronger sleep problems connected to late night drinking also, by the way, but it is a serious concern for both men and women. It also increases late night bathroom visits, which is, of course, another sleep disruption. Tired drivers create a hazard on our roads similar to that of drunk drivers. They cause one in six fatal car accidents. Failing to take care for ourselves and getting the sleep that we need puts not just us in danger, not just you in danger, but also those around you. Finish drinking at least three hours before bedtime. Sleep well so you're not at risk of dangerous driving. When you're consuming alcohol, Drink at least equal amounts in water. Big idea number eight, sleep positions and feeling at peace. The position you sleep in also has an impact on your health. From restricting oxygen, blood flow, and digestion to impairing spinal alignment, there are many reasons to avoid poor positioning. The best position is on your back unless you suffer from sleep apnea. Avoid large pillows and be conscious of maintaining the natural alignment of your spine. Do not use a worn-out mattress, that is, one that's more than seven years old. Sleeping on your side is also acceptable, as long as your head is not propped up too high. Invest in a non-toxic quality mattress as well. Begin the night in your ideal sleeping position and adjust your back to this whenever you need to. Communicate with your sleeping partner so that you can both enjoy a good solid quality night's sleep. Get the best non-toxic mattress you can. Humans naturally have busy brains full of thoughts. This can be a problem at nighttime when we need to have peace and tranquility. Use meditation to reduce stress, and teach your brain to quiet its chatter. The more you meditate, the greater the benefits. It increases good hormones, it decreases stress-related hormones, and can even decrease inflammation. Outside of meditation, 
you'll be better able to focus and your brain will be primed for attention and sensory processing. Meditation also lowers blood pressure and stroke risk, decreases pain, and can even treat insomnia. We also benefit from improving our breathing. Controlled breathing can deal with a sudden stress response and help us maintain a calmer outlook. Ensure you breathe deep into your belly. Put a hand over your belly to check instead of up into your shoulders. Continue deep breathing with a pause after each inhale and exhale. Just a few rounds of focused breathing can actually instantly change your physiology. Practice mindfulness meditation where you tune your senses into the world around you in your present moment. Meditating in the morning and before bedtime is especially beneficial. Use guided meditations if you need some help getting started. Practice mindfully breathing with a slow focus on each part of your body, one at a time. If you do wake up in the middle of the night, first, ensure you are utilizing all the sleep advice you've been given. See your doctor if sleep apnea could be a possibility for you. Then, have a meditation plan so you can stay peaceful and drift yourself back off to sleep. Big idea number nine. Supplements and waking up early. Practice good nutrition and lifestyle habits before trying supplements. Then, you may consider natural sleep aids such as chamomile, kava kava, and valerian. 5-HTP, GABA, and L-tryptophan are also used, but they are not natural herbal preparations and must be used with caution. Melatonin is not indicated as a sleep supplement although it is commonly mistaken for one. Melatonin is actually a hormone, and it comes with greater risk of side effects, such as decreasing your body's natural production of melatonin and requiring increasingly large doses for the same effect. Again, use all other healthy options to improve sleep and health before turning to supplements. Remember that everyone responds differently, so start with a low dose and slowly increase only if necessary. Never consume sleep aids and alcohol. Getting up early also leads to better sleep. We are not designed to be nocturnal. It's not just how you sleep, but when you sleep that helps to create the best version of you. Even in studies of college students, the early risers had higher grades. Night owls can gradually reset their sleep cycles by going to bed 15 minutes earlier than usual and repeating this increase every few days until they are going to bed at an optimal time. You can also practice this for waking up earlier in the morning. In addition, choose to be excited about getting up early. Jump out of bed. Charge into your day. Move your alarm clock across the room so you have to get out of bed to turn it off. That'll help you stay awake once you get up. Try to create happy morning routines. Go to bed within 30 minutes of the same time each night and wake up at the same time each day. Get to bed earlier when your sleep is more valuable. Big idea number 10. Get a massage and some pajamas. Massage provides excellent health benefits and decreased stress and tension as well as better sleep. Historically, Massage was used to relieve pain. It can lead to a deep state of relaxation and better sleep. On your own, you can do acupressure massage as well, placing pressure slowly and deeply on various places on your body that produce signals for the body to engage in healing and regulation. Get a massage this week. Try progressive muscle relaxation, where you tense and then relax each muscle in sequence. You can also use a variety of at-home tools for self-massage. Putting on your PJs can be like a mental trigger to relax and wind down for the day. Choose pajamas that are comfortable and cool and don't restrict your circulation. Women should not wear their bras to bed and men should wear loose-fitting underwear. Ideally, your nightwear will be non-restricting and hypoallergenic. Those who wear nothing to bed 
will experience further benefits. Big idea number 11. Touch the earth. During an inflammatory response, blood cells called neutrophils carry free radicals to the site of injury. These free radicals are positively charged. Their job is to destroy bacteria and damaged cells and create space for healing. If this process gets out of hand, free radicals can damage healthy tissue. This sends its own burst of free radicals in defense, and harmful inflammation results. The positive charges in the body are generally dealt with by antioxidants that neutralize free radicals before they become a problem. You are not able to consume antioxidants to effectively reverse this. The answer lies in the ground. When the human body comes in contact with the earth, called grounding or earthing, it allows negatively charged antioxidant electrons from the earth to enter the body and neutralize positively charged free radicals at sites of inflammation. It's been confirmed that earthing has a measurable impact on stress reduction. Being grounded during sleep has been shown to be beneficial. You can get earthing mats that plug into the grounding plug in your outlet and provide the same results. It can also protect your body from EMFs. Whenever you can, have physical contact with the earth. Bare feet on the ground for at least 10 minutes a day. It's also beneficial for counteracting jet lag. Stevenson calls this getting his vitamin G. Closing notes. Key takeaway. Sleep is necessary for our body to maintain health and vitality. Stevenson shows that by changing habits and techniques, you can access and enjoy this critical aspect of our health for the rest of your life. Actionable insights. Understand that you can only achieve excellent health with excellent sleep. Make sleep and everything about sleep the first thing you plan in your schedule. Enjoy trying new things and finding out the best tools for helping you get an amazing night's sleep every night.